today we're going to have a look at the um, National Senior Certificate Computer Application Technology Paper 1 of November 2020. Question 1 Word Processing and um, this scenario isn't that important but you can have a read through that um, in practical. In theory it's extremely important so um, open the One Pyramids word processing document that contains information about the pyramids and insert your examination number in the header or the footer. Right, that first instruction is extremely important. Should something go wrong about saving your file in the right position or the right place, this is the only identifying factor for them to actually know whose file they're busy marking. So it's really important that you actually put your exam number where they're asking you. Okay. 1.1. 1. 1. Change the picture found at the top of the page of the first page as follows. Set the width of the picture to 21 centimeters. Move the picture to the top edge of the page so that it extends over the top left and right margins of the page. Right, so it's not that it needs to extend over the top of the page. It just needs to extend over the top left and right margins of the page as shown below. So they've given you a screenshot of what it should actually look like. It needs to look exactly like that. Then remove all the empty paragraphs below the picture. Right, let's go have a look at how to do that. So step one, we need to change the size on the picture format tab. We're going to change it to 21 centimeters. Now, it's going to cover my exam number. That's fine. They can still find it. It's not a problem. So I move it to the top so that it extends over the top left and right margins. Okay. And now I need to remove all the empty paragraphs. I can't guess where they are. So I'm going to go to my home tab, switch on my show and hide and actually see and delete them. Okay. I'm using delete so that it deletes to the right of my cursor. Okay. 1.2. Edit the heading Amazing Facts About the Great Pyramids of Giza below the picture as follows. Remove the strike through. Expand the character spacing by 1.5 points. And center the heading. Okay. So, first re remove the strike through. Okay. Do you see what's happening now? It keeps selecting the picture as part of the text. Now, it's still, still going to work, everything I'm going to do, but just so that you know how to fix that, if that happens, you can actually move this object anchor to a different um, uh, place. So I can move this anchor to a different paragraph if that bothers me. Okay, so I'm removing the strike through. I can center the heading. And I can expand the character spacing over here in the font group. Advanced, spacing, expanded, and change it to 1.5. Okay, there it's expanded. I'm going to switch off my show height for now. 1.3. Use the author and the date given in the text below the heading Amazing Facts About the Great Pyramids of Giza to add a website source in the APA style to the document. So it's a website source. Okay. So here's the information I need to use. And I just need to add the website source. Okay. So references, manage sources. The style is already APA, so that's fine. Manage sources, new. So you'll see the current list is empty. If you're writing an exam, the master list will also be empty. The master list in my case just has some information here because I've already added sources on this particular PC, this computer that I'm working on. So new, the author, let me just move this out of the way and then I can actually see that. New, the author is Nina Singh. The better way to add that would probably be to go edit and add it here because I'm assuming um, Nina is the first name, the last name is um, Sen, but I think it's fixed that anyway, so that's fine. And um, oh, it's not a book, it's a website. There you go. And the there's the date. We've got the year 2012. Oh, 
12, September 6th. You'll see here when I click when I click here, it shows me the example of how I should type it in, that I shouldn't just type it in as a number. Okay. And that's it. That's all I was supposed to do for that question. 1.4. Use a word processing feature to replace all the non-breaking spaces in the document with normal spaces. Ensure that only one normal space appears in the place of a non-breaking space. Okay, so you can't put more than one normal space. Okay, so they're asking us to do this um, with a word processing feature and not manually. Um, if I were to do it manually, if I switch on show hide, I can actually find them like this. That's a non-breaking space. You can see that right there. Okay, so to do this with a find um, with a word processing feature, I'd need find and replace. So it's on my home tab. There's my replace button. And let's have a look. So find what more. If this is a specific character, it's a special character. So this is a non-breaking space, and I need to replace it with a regular space. Now you'll see an actual regular space isn't an, an option here, so I'm just going to press space once and say replace all. 14 replacements, okay. And I've checked the memo, that's the correct number. Okay, and you'll see here now all those non-breaking spaces have been replaced with regular spaces. 1.5 Change the indentation settings on the ruler of the paragraph that starts with one of as follows. Set the first line indent to 2 cm and set the right indent to 14 cm. Okay, now there's a catch here. They're specifically asking us to do it on the ruler and I would always have taught you and I'm sure your teacher would always have taught you never do it on the ruler. Please do it with the settings. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the settings and I'm going to show you how to do it on the ruler. So we're looking for the one of and we're going to set the first line indent to 2 cm and the right indent to 14 cm or on 14 cm. That's the catch. Right, so it's this paragraph that they're talking about. Now, if I do it on the ruler, you'll see this is the first line indent, so I can just drag it to two centimeters, and this is the right indent, and I can drag it to 14 for the right indent. Okay, now the trick is, if I had done this doing using the settings, I couldn't have said that right must be 14, Right can only be a maximum, you could maybe have set this to 2, but not to 14, because if you set it to 14, it's going to try to um, subtract 14 from 16. So then it's only going to have, then it's actually going to end up here, then there won't be any space for the text. So that's the problem, is you can't actually, this is not the number it's going to end up on, on the physical ruler. This is just how much to subtract from the margin, basically. Okay, so you see this is what it ended up as. So I would have still gotten my marks because this was marked visually from the ruler because that's what the question asked for. Okay. 1.6. Change the line and paragraph spacing of the second paragraph that starts with the grand as follows. Set the paragraph spacing after to 8 points and set the line spacing to multiple at 1.4. So, it's this paragraph. Okay, if you're unsure, let's switch on our show hide, and then we make sure we're choosing one paragraph. Okay, so the paragraph spacing after needs to be eight points. You'll see that's not an increment that's available, so I need to type it in manually. And the line spacing needs to be multiple at 1.4. There you go. 1.7. Use a paragraph setting to ensure that the heading insert here will always appear as the first line of a new page. Okay, so they've specifically underlined a paragraph setting because 
how can we normally make a heading insert here appear on the first line of a new page? We would have just inserted a page break, right? Okay, but a page break is not a paragraph setting. So paragraph setting will be page break before, but that's a paragraph setting and not an actual page break. Okay, so now it appears as the first line on a new page, but it's a paragraph setting. 1.8. Find the heading insert here. Insert the one structure word processing document found in your examination folder below the heading so that it appears as an icon. Okay, so we need to insert the actual file. It's not a, it's not a hyperlink to the file. It's the actual file. Okay, so that's how I can always remember what I'm supposed to do. I am inserting an actual file, so I'm inserting an object. Okay, and I'm going to let it appear as an icon. Right. So below the heading, insert an object, create from file, then find the one that you're supposed to insert, and I'm going to display it as an icon. There you go. 1.9. Find the picture below the heading Dimensions and do the following. Format the picture so that the text below the picture does not display. Okay, for this one I'm going to do one thing at a time. So, okay, here's the picture. I need to format the picture so that the text doesn't display. So, if they just said the text shouldn't display, I could maybe have like inserted a white text box over it. But in this case, they said I need to format the picture itself. So I'm going to crop the text out. I think that's the only solution there was. Right. Now, we need to change the caption dimensions of the Great Pyramid so that the caption label displays as structure. Okay, now that's a tricky one. At the moment, the caption label is figure. That's the normal caption label. Okay, so dimensions of the great, great pyramid. I'm going to copy this. I'm actually going to delete this whole thing. And I'm going to insert a caption. And let's see what they said. They said it needs to be be structure. All right, so I'm going to make it um, a new label called structure. Okay, and then they also said, I haven't read that instruction, but let's just check. They also say set the label, the caption label numbering to the ABC numbering format. So before we complete this, let's just do that numbering. ABC numbering format, and then I can insert the text like it should be again. Right, so I made a new custom label, I changed the numbering, and then I just pasted the text from the old caption. And I'm going to leave it above the item like it was for the first one, above the picture. There you go. So now it's in the same place, it's in the same position, and it's got the new label. Now just so that you know, just so that you think, don't think I can just type this in like you want to. The way it's actually marked is the, the teacher actually marks from this. They actually have a look at the um, field codes. And there you can see that this structure wasn't typed in manually. It's actually a sequence, the structure sequence. And it's an alphabetic number system. So um, you can't actually fool this. There's no other way to do it than to do it properly. Okay. 1.10. Insert a text watermark as follows. Use the text ancient. Display the watermark only on the first page. Okay, that's a nice and challenging one. Let's go. All right, so 
The, the thing is, watermarks actually work with sections. So, and it, it, it actually text that's in the header um, or a picture that's in the header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit header. I'm going to switch on different first page. So now the first page is different. Okay, just so that I have the sections correct for that. Now I'll go to put in the watermark. And let's just remind me what that was. It was ancient, and they didn't tell us about the direction or anything else. So it was custom watermark, text, ancient. Okay. Right. So now the watermark's there, but it's also on all the other pages. So now all I do is I edit the header. And now, because there's a different first page, I can actually just go and click on it on the second page and delete it. And it remains on the first page. Okay. If this was a question where it asked for it, say, for example, on the last page, I would have had to first unlink the two different sections before I would be able to delete whatever was in the um, watermark. Okay, but in this instance, I could have just removed it and it remains on the, diff on the different first page because it's already as if it's unlinked because it is set to be a different first page. Okay, and that's it.